Welcome guys to a new amazing video in which we will build a chat app using Zigo Cloud SDK. And Zigo Cloud is a global communication service provider that provides us developer-friendly SDKs and APIs that we can use to integrate communication features in our apps such as video calling, voice calling, in-app chat, live streaming, and so on. And I already made a video for how to build a video and voice calling app with this SDK, now we'll see how to do in-app chat. And what we'll build is an app that has a sender ID and receiver ID, and we can start a chat with them. And this would be really good if you have something like an e-commerce app in which your main, of course, focus is to make people sell and buy products, but also you may want buyers to chat with sellers for support or something like so. And this SDK would really be good for that. Or if you just want to build a social networking app in which you want to have an app chat that you can put in your portfolio and so on. And here's the app and I have two devices, Pixel 8 Pro and a Pixel 7. And here I already started a conversation. So this is user two and in the Pixel 7, I have user one. And if we open the conversation that I started, as you can see, I sent messages, I sent emojis, even images, and as well as files, you can take photos, you can simply send anything. And let me just send now something here, anything like something like this. If we go to the other device, and as you can see, it says once something has been received, and here is the message that we just sent, and we can send something like OK, send that. If we go here, here is OK. So it's a fully functional chat app that really is just working great. And of course, what I'm showing you here is pre-built. So the UI that you can see here is actually coming from the SDK that we'll be using. You can definitely customize it, but that is a little bit different. What I'm going to show you is to have it pre-built like this, but I also show you how to customize it if you want it you know, looking different somehow. And we get other things like do not disturb or pin a chat if we want like this. And of course we can start any number of chats that we want. We just need to provide the user that we want to chat with. That's all we need. So what we'll do is we want to go to zigocloud.com, which is the website of the SDK that we'll be using and specifically UI kit. This is what we are going to use. What you want to do is you want to create an account, go ahead and sign up. I will of course leave you all the links in the description of this video and just fill this with your information. It's pretty easy. And then you can create an account. Okay, that's it. That's all you need. I already created an account, so I'm just going to log in. Here I am, I'm logged in. I already have some projects, as you can see. And if you look here, you can also do video calling, as I said, and you get 10,000 minutes for free. And I already used 15 minutes, but you can have video and voice calling and you get 10,000 minutes for free. That's really a huge number that you can use. So what we want to do now is let's first check out the documentation, which is right here. Here's the documentation. And of course, if you have mini chats, this is how it would look like. But what we want to do is we want to quick start right here. Before getting the ID, let's just first write the code. But here, we are going to integrate the pre-built UI that ZipCloud provides us. If you want to build your own, this is the documentation in which you manually send the messages to users and all those stuff. I'll also leave this documentation link in the description. But in our case, we just want to use the pre-built one because it already looks great. So what we want to do is we want to have these two lines in our settings.gradle. And since this is not Kotlin, I'm just going now to paste the Kotlin version. So you want to go here and then settings.gradle and paste them right here. So these two lines are simply these in Kotlin. That's it. You want now to go to our build.gradle, the app module one right here, and we want to add some things. What we need now is this dependency right here. So you just now paste the Kotlin version and we want to go down here and paste it. So here it is all the way here. And the reason why I'm excluding support.compat library from this SDK is that it was already introduced in core.qts or Android X .core qts And since it is introduced in both of them, that just generates errors. So we just exclude it from here. But of course, the app works just great. And the second thing we need is data binding because the chat screen and the conversation screen, those are built with XML and that needs data binding. So data binding, set that to true like this. It will show a little warning that says we need to add capped. As you can see, if you want to do that, you can, but the app just works great without it and I don't have to. So that's what we need in build.gradle. The last thing we need is that we want to go to our gradle.properties and we want to add a little line, which is 
this one there's just an error and this is how to fix it i don't remember the error but yeah there was an error and we need to add this little line to fix it and that's it that's all we need and actually i need to also sync now so sync the project and you're good to go so we want to go to our main activity and as i said the conversation screen is actually an activity that is launched and for that we need a little bit of a different theme for it so right here we just want to use a different theme which is not going to be this material light no action bar but instead it's going to be this one which is material components day night no action bar so this is the one we need and of course the app will just be the same and the last thing right here is that this is a component activity and a chat screen is actually a fragment and for that we need a fragment activity maybe i need to import it yeah just like this this is what we need and of course fragment activity in the end as you can see extends component activity which means everything is just the same now we can go ahead and delete these or this grid and composable and we can start from here and actually another thing i want to show you is that before opening this chat screen let's just go back and relaunch the app we just first get a little start screen in which we can open a conversation and they have a button to open actually not a conversation but conversations so open conversations screen and i just do this and here I have the conversation I already have. So that's how the app looks like. Let's go back to our documentation and see what we need. We first of all need to initialize ZIM kit with an app ID and an app sign. And I will show you how to get them. You want to come here, you want to go to your projects, projects management, and you want to create a new project. They already have projects as you can see. You want to create a project and you get a lot of things that you can do. You get something that we already did in another video, which is voice and video call. You get an in-app chat, which is what we need. And you get so many more things like video conference, live streaming, live audio room, and just everything for communication features that you want to have in our app. Now just go ahead and choose in-app chat, click next, and give it a name like chat app. Let's do it like this, tutorial, click continue. And here's our project created. Let's open it. I'm going to hide this, but you get this app ID and you get this app sign. And they are what we need to initialize our SDK. So let's go to our project again in our activity and that is create a function private fun. Let's just call it in its SDK or something like so. And paste this. So this is how you initialize it. Right here in the app ID, you want to have an app ID, which is a long. So if you add a number right here like this, you just want to have an L in the end since it's a long because that's what this init with SDK needs. And then the app sign is a string. We need application, app ID, app sign, and then we just need ZIM kit config like this. For notifications, we just want to say init notifications like this. So that's all you need to initialize it. You want to go ahead in your activity and call that function init. That's it for initializing. Now the next thing we need is to actually connect a user like this, as you can see, and to open the conversation screen. In our case, that's going to be a fragment. So Let's just see right here. So this fragment, since this is XML, but we won't use XML. Of course, we'll use Jetpack Compose and we'll come right here and we need first a state to tell us whether we need to navigate to the other screen, which is the conversation screen or not. So we of course only want to navigate there when the SDK is initialized and the user is successfully connected or logged in, you could say. So in your app, you want to have some logic to generate a user ID. Like if you use Mongo database, for example, that will be an object ID. If you use room database, that will be that normal room database ID that you would have in an entity. And you may ask your user to enter a password and so on. So that's all your own logic. The main thing is that you want to provide for each user, a user ID and the, their username, of course to connect them with this SDK. And the example I gave you, if you have an e-commerce app, then that's going to be, for example, the seller ID and the buyer ID as well, or the customer ID. So you can use those to start a conversation between them. And here the state that we we'll need is going to be a private, actually var open conversations like this. And that is going to be a composed state. So by mutable state of false at first until we initialize our SDK import and that's it. We want to come here and then let's create our screen that is going to be a composable. Let's call it screen like this. So that is going to be either one of these state, two things. F, open conversations and that's going to be conversation screen. Else, that's going to be just a button. So let's say box like this that takes our modifier dot fill max size. And then we want to censor the content 
acquaintance alignments alignment dots center like this imports alignments and then put a button right there right here you just have a text that says open conversations and how do we open our conversation we want to create a function now so that's what we'll call right here the function let's put it right here it's going to be a private fun connect user first of all we need to connect a user to start a conversation and what we need is a var user id so as i said the id the first user let's say they are user one and then duplicate this for the username username and just to skip it the same and then an avatar which is an image so let's say var user for example image or avatar or whatever you want which is going to be a string that is something like this uh, an online image that is a PNG or a JPEG or so. So the image needs to be like this, which is something again that you would have in your e-commerce app. If you have that, the user can update their image and you get the URL because you hosted the image somewhere in your database or on Firebase or something like so. That's it. Now we want to connect the user. We want to do ZIM kit dot connect user. We want to provide our user ID and then the username and the user image like this here what we get is an info like this using this info we can tell whether the user is connected or not so if info dot code is zim kit code dot dot success actually success like this then we did connect the user so we can just say open conversations is going to be true and then else when they are not connected then that's going to be false and it's already false by default we can just have a toast for example dot make text passing our context which is this and then something like connect user failed and with the error even though there won't be any error and then toast dot long and then we show that so that's how we connect a user what we want now is to go to our button and call that connect user function of course all of this needs to be in some sort of a data layer in your app i'm just going to show you now how to do this but you want to have some clean architecture that separates this logic of connecting users initializing the sdk from your presentation because that's not clean code but here i'm not worried about clean code i just need to get this working and that's your job in the end and i already have videos of how to create clean architecture apps you can just check my channel also if you just want to build a large scale app with this clean architecture and more industry skills with really great ui using jetpack compose and more then check out the premium course that i launched with a 20 percent discount for the next 10 days you can find the link in the description what we want now to do is navigate into the conversation screen when this is true because this is state when it's true we want to navigate here so Let's create a little screen here, composable, and let's say conversations screen like this. And since as I said, that's a fragment, so we need a fragment manager. So fragment manager is going to be remember this activity main dot support fragment manager. That's what we'll use to go to the fragments we need. And then let's define the fragment that we want to go to. So that's going to be a var fragment that is again remember zim kit conversation fragment and i can't seem to find that or import that okay let's just now continue and maybe i'm missing some dependency or so i'll add that later what we need now is an underwood view to launch our fragments so underwood view the factory let's first pass a modifier here so modifier is going to be the modifier that we passed and then the factory is going to be a lambda function like this in which we get the context and we need a frame layout for that that needs to take the context that we passed dot apply to apply some things to it the first thing is its id is going to be view dot generative view id and then the layout params are going to be view group dot layout params open the function and then just like this much parents for the width and the height and then the next thing we need is want to come right here and then call the other function or pass the other functions as is update that is going to be our fragments manager dot begin transaction and then dot replace like this the id is going to be it dot id of course it here stands for the view that is our frame layout and then what we want is our fragments manager of course we replace it with the first one is the container that contains that fragment which is this frame layout 
and then the fragment that we want to begin transaction to and then we want to commit like this we get an error right here maybe yeah because i don't have this one yet and i will see why after a little bit of time trying to find what the problem is it seems like i have an, an s that i shouldn't have that is just conversation not conversations now what we want to do is we want to go here and now call our conversation screen and then we want to go to our scaffold call our screen passing a modifier with the padding so modifier dot padding it this will work now let's try this out actually padding is padding or inner padding that's what it's called we can try running the app but we won't have any conversation because we didn't start a conversation with any other user here we are logged in with the first user but there is no other user but still let's just launch the app and let's now open the conversation screen the user is not connected and the reason why is i don't have any id so i'm going to add my id now okay now add the id and the app sign but please don't show those to anyone they are secret now let's just rerun the app okay as you can see now it's working as you can see here is my conversation screen but with no chat and the way i can now start a conversation with another user is now okay let's just stop the app to not auto update it and let's reopen it in this pixel 7 now i am logged in with the first user what i'm going to do is now change to the second user like this user 2 and now run the app in another device to be logged in with the second user but i don't only want to be logged in with the second user i also want to start a conversation with the other user so let me just create some space down here and then let's create a private function let's say start chat with the other user that we want to start it with which is the first user so zim kit router like this dot to message activity since that's going to launch another activity and then this and then a user id that we want to start the chat with and then zim kit conversation type p which is a single conversation you also get a group conversation like this but in this case we don't want that and that's it we want to pass now our user id that we want to start the conversation with which is going to be a string and then once our user is connected right here we want to start that new conversation so it's going to be start chat but with the other user that is going to be now user one which is the previous user now we won't run the app on the same device which is the pixel stable let's run it on another device now here's the pixel 8 in which i'm logged in with the first user and in the, on the pixel 7 i'm now logged in with the second user and when i click on open conversation as you can see it did started with the first user and if we go back to our pixel 7 we first need to maybe send a message so something like hi send that and it should be right here as you can see the message has arrived or the message has arrived and we can send back something like okay and of course you can send images emojis whatever you want so that's how we start a conversation in on the pixel 7 we are logged in with the second user and we are chatting with the first user on the pixel 8 we are logged in with the first user and we are chatting with the second user so that's how it works and that's how you create a chat app you can have as many conversations as you want you can customize this or fully customize this if you go to the documentation right here and this is documentation to customize the chats to manually send the messages to have full control over everything and if you want to get more videos like this in which you build more great apps then make sure to subscribe and support this video by leaving a like on it see you in the next video bye